guys, so today we're going to be talking about another very popular houseplant. It's the umbrella tree, and there's two different varieties that you'll more than likely see available to you. Today we're going to talk about those. So really there are two types of umbrella trees that are commonly available. There's the commonly known dwarf umbrella tree, also called the Schifflera arboricola. And then there's kind of your more standard umbrella tree, which isn't a dwarf, and that's the Schifflera actinophylla. Now, these two umbrella trees both make great houseplants, but there are a couple of differences between the two, mainly the size. So the dwarf umbrella trees only get about two or so meters tall, where these ones, uh, they can turn into proper trees. They can get absolutely massive, so it is, it is advised to prune them back every now and again if you're going to keep them indoors and they're growing really well, because otherwise they're going to be hitting your ceiling in no time. Now these guys have got the name umbrella tree, pretty much because as you can see, the leaves do kind of resemble an umbrella shape. Both the dwarf and the large variety both have the same sort of leaf structure. The dwarf one just usually has more leaves per umbrella, but yeah, that's kind of how they got their name. So when you go to pick an umbrella tree, uh, of course you want to start off with a healthy plant from the get-go, so it's important to get one that has a lot of foliage and leaves, all the little umbrellas are in good condition, there's no like damage to them or anything like that. Check that it's no pests on them, no pest insects or anything. Other than that, these are quite an easy one to keep. Now you might notice with my dwarf umbrella tree, it's actually a variegated dwarf umbrella tree. So it's got a mix of the dark green and the, I guess, light green or neon green, I don't know what you'd call it, but yeah, it's a variegated variety. This also does come in just the standard green variety as well, which is a similar color to this one. Um, I just have the variegated in the dwarf. So when it comes to placing these guys in your home, they do like bright light, but they do not like direct sunlight for any length of time. So if you could put them somewhere where they get bright indirect or filtered light throughout the uh, whole duration of the day, they will absolutely thrive and grow very quickly. Direct sunlight, they can handle a little bit of morning sun or a little bit of afternoon sun, but if they're in a spot where they're getting sunlight all day long, they're probably going to burn. Besides that, these guys do not like draft either, so try to keep them away from open windows and doors. Uh, they just don't like any sort of cold draft constantly on them because, again, that'll make them lose leaves. They'll appreciate a bit of humidity as well because these are both tropical plants. The Schifflera arboricola is native to Taiwan, where the Schifflera actinifolia is native to tropical America and North Australia. So they're both from tropical places. So. Spring and summer and autumn in your home, usually most people during those growing seasons will have a high humidity in their home and these plants will absolutely thrive. You can also keep them outdoors in that during those seasons. If you're going to keep a Schifflera outside, keep it outside during the growing seasons of spring, summer and autumn where the humidity is a bit higher. Keep it somewhere where it's not in direct sunlight though, it'll do quite well. And then when you want to bring it indoors, you can during the winter period. With watering Schiffleras, they are a little bit different to your typical houseplants like um, Dracaenas, for example, or Monsteras. They're a very thirsty plant, and because they're a tropical plant, they come, they grow in places where the soil's never ever dry. It's always at least slightly damp, if not wet. Apologies for the noise, by the way. There's a bunch of lorikeets sitting on my window ledge screaming at the moment, so we're going to have to put up with that noise as well. Um, yeah, anyways, so, sorry if you can't hear me over the birds carrying on, they're just like literally right there. Swear to God, if it's not my cat interrupting my videos, it's the birds. Anywho, um, so yeah, these guys come from places where the soil's always a bit damp, if not very wet, they don't like drying out between watering like a lot of typical houseplants do. So I'd actually advise, rather than watering them, letting them completely dry up before you water again, um, just keep the soil slightly damp at all times. So you can do the, um, you can give them a big water and completely drain the pot through and let it drain out completely, like you would with any houseplant. Um, but then what you want to do is you've got to be more diligent with using your finger to check the soil. Uh, you have to do it more regularly because you don't want these to dry out completely. And once it starts feeling like, um, I don't know, the best way I can describe it is, I guess, cold. So when the soil feels not dry but cold and ever so slightly damp still, you can water again. These guys just don't handle being dry 
for any length of time that well, they'll start wilting and losing leaves very quickly. So just keep that in mind when you buy these guys. They're ever so slightly more high maintenance on the watering side of things. Other than that, their care is otherwise very much similar to a lot of other typical house plants. As I was saying, bright indirect light, they don't like cold and draft, they like a higher humidity. If you want to wipe the leaves down every couple of weeks to keep them nice and clean so they can photosynthesize properly, do that as well. Fertilizer is very similar. You can use a liquid based fertilizer during the growing seasons of spring, summer and autumn. Once every two weeks. Winter time, don't worry about fertilizing of these. And they'll do quite well for you. They're honestly not that difficult. The only thing that makes them a little bit more uh, finicky is the watering has to be slightly more regular as they just can't handle dry soil. I will also mention that if you do happen to get a variegated variety of the dwarf umbrella tree, um, you're gonna have to up the lighting a tiny bit. And this goes for honestly any houseplant that has variegations they need higher lighting. Plants that have just darker green or darker colored leaves can live in lower lighting. Variegated plants need much higher lighting, otherwise they can lose their variegation. And the reason for that is on the sections of the leaves that have these lighter variegations, those light parts of the leaves don't actually photosynthesize anywhere near as well as the darker parts of the leaves. So I'd say the variegations on this plant are, I don't know, maybe about 50-50, uh, where at least half of the plant is this light green color. So that means this plant can only photosynthesize half as good as a standard dark green um, Schifflera. So to compensate that, I'd have to keep it in slightly higher lighting conditions to keep it looking like this. Otherwise, it will over time just lose these variegations and go dark green. So if you have trouble finding that sort of place to put it in your house where it does get that higher indirect lighting all day long to maintain the variegated look, you might want to invest in a grow light. Uh, otherwise, you might just have to put up with this one changing color and turning into this dark green color like we have here. Now, umbrella trees are toxic to pets as well. So you do have to be careful with these if you have animals that are known to chew on your house plants. Fortunately, um, I mainly have reptiles, so they're nowhere near any of my plants, and my cat doesn't actually touch the plants, which is fantastic. Uh, he just couldn't care less about my plants, so that's great. I can kind of have full choice of plants that way. But just bear that in mind, if you've got like a, a dog that likes to chew on leaves, I've found that most of the time it's dogs that chew up plants, not so much cats. Cats more or less like to dig up the soil in the pots rather than actually chew on the plant itself. But uh, thankfully mine just leaves them alone. But um, yeah, dogs are more likely to chew on plants. I've found, especially with puppies, because they just chew on everything. So I'd keep this up high or um, just don't get one until your dog's old enough to behave, I suppose, around your plants. Just because, yeah. Not like it's deadly toxic, but it's gonna cause a lot of irritation around the mouth and it could swell their throat up a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's not a great one for pets in that way. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is propagating these. It's actually quite easy to do. Um, I've got some here that I've already propagated a while ago that I'll show you their progress. I'm gonna pot some up soon probably too. They're about due to be potted anyways. Uh, pretty much to propagate these, there's two ways you can do it. One way is I can spin this thing around real quick because I don't want to do it from the front. <laughs> uh, basically what you want to do, I'm at a really weird angle guys, sorry, but you can just snap off a leaf and propagate from a leaf. It's important that when you do it, you keep the base of the leaf because each leaf as it connects, I'll probably show you the bigger one just to give you an example, it's easier to see. Each leaf at the very base where it connects to the stem, it's got this big base. You want to keep that, and that's what the roots will grow out of. That giant, yeah, I guess you'd call it a base, or I don't know. <laughs> but you want to snap it off with that. So I'll just do it with one here. So yeah, that's basically it there. I don't know if you can see it. But at the base of this leaf, there's a little, a bit at the stem, there's like a little thick base. And that's what the roots grow out of. So I'll do a couple. 
Okay, so I've done three, um, and as you can see, at the bottom of each stem there's like this fat base, and that's what the roots are going to grow from. Now you can just dip this straight in water and leave it to sit in water. I personally do prefer to use a rooting hormone. Um, it comes in a powdered form or a jelly form. I prefer the powdered one, it just sticks to these quite well. So all you want to do, get that out of the way so you can see it, is just dip it in the powder, in the rooting hormone like that. Pop it in your water, and that's it. This one's got quite a short stem, so should still reach the water though. And that's it. And then you just leave them alone until they grow roots. And once they've got about an inch to two inches of roots, you can pop them in soil. From there, once I'll show you some that I've already done, so you have a better idea of what they're going to look like. So. If I can find it, because some of these haven't actually... These are of a dark green one that I've got in a terrarium, that's why it's not here. Uh, but pretty much, that's the one I want there. If I can... Okay. These ones haven't taken off. They haven't taken off yet. Um, I will say with these, they're a very slow plant with growing roots. This one, it's just started to grow a single root. And this has been in water now for about a month, maybe a month and a half. Saying that we're in winter at the moment, summer and spring, it'll probably be a bit quicker. Uh, but yeah, this is just over a month, so quite slow, considering in a month's time you could do something like, you could do this to a pothos, and it'd have a full root system by then. Uh, so they are slow. So I've got that one, and I'll show you some that are a bit older again. So these ones have been in water now for two and a half months, possibly three. I've honestly uh, kind of lost track and it's actually kind of hard to get them out because I've let the root system get so big, but be gentle because I don't want to break it. So you can see that that one's got a much larger root system on it. That's fine to pot now. And if I show you this other one, which is even older actually, I did this one first. The thing I don't like about these is the opening for these is so small, it's hard to get them out. So yeah, that's probably about three months. That is well and truly ready to pot. So what will happen is you'll pot this in soil, because you'll pot this in soil and you'll just cover the roots and like the first centimeter or so of the stem. Um, and what will happen is out the side of the stem, a little tree will start to grow. And voila, you have an umbrella tree. So that's one way to go about propagating these. The other way is to just straight up snip a whole stem off the tree. So again, I'm not going to do it because this tree isn't that tall yet. I don't want to take any cuttings right now. Um, but if you were to just take your scissors and cut the top off the tree, whatever length you feel you want, I'd say about that long is pretty safe. Cut that off, take off all of the leaves except the very last two or three leaves at the very top, leave them there, but take the rest off the stem. And you can either stick that stem in water, you can dip in rooting hormone before that as well, up to you. Stick it in water or dip it in rooting hormone and just straight up pot it in soil. And it should grow roots. Just bear in mind, if you do pot it straight into soil, keep that soil wet at all times because uh, the stem is gonna dry out very quickly without roots. And that's why we break off almost all of the leaves, except two or three of the very last ones on the top. Because the leaves draw a lot of moisture from the stem. And the stem can't replenish that moisture without roots yet. So you want to break most of them off, but you want to leave at least two or three leaves. So the plant can still photosynthesize, because the leaves is what do, is doing the photosynthesis. Allowing the plant to grow roots, is, allowing the plant to actually grow roots. Once it's got roots, you can get it on a more typical watering regime, but you want to really keep that soil wet until it grows roots. And like with the leaf propagation, it's uh, very slow at growing roots, so it is going to be something you're going to have to keep an eye on with the soil staying wet, so it is going to be a high maintenance thing. That's why I personally prefer with these, because they grow roots slowly, to do it in water. That way it's never going to dry up because it's in water. There's no risk of your soil drying out and you killing your cutting. So with regarding their watering, how I was saying they don't like being dried out, 
Um, you also want to take into consideration that their soil mix is going to be a little different also to a typical house plant. Uh, because they don't like to dry out, you can go a little easier on the perlite in the soil. So I'll say usually to mix perlite with your soil to enable drainage. With these, you can still use some perlite. It's always good to have at least some in there for some drainage because uh, perlite also allows oxygen to exist in the soil because it provides air gaps and roots need oxygen as well. But because they don't like drying out, you can use a bit less perlite. So your soil does hold a little tiny bit more water than it normally would. Uh, just so you don't have to be constantly checking as regularly if it's dried out or not, because you don't want it drying out every couple of days in spring and summer with a well drainage type soil mix. So uh, just go easier on the perlite, and you'll find it'll be much easier with these, with the watering. Alright guys, well that's basically my video on the umbrella tree. Whether you decide to go with the big classical type umbrella tree with its beautiful shiny leaves, they create a really great canopy in your house when they get bigger, or you go for the smaller type that gets only about two meters tall, but it can come in this wonderful variegated variety, which looks really uh, eye-catching as well. Either way, they're a great house plant. Not too difficult to care for. They've got a couple of extra requirements, as I was saying, but it's still fairly, fairly um, easy to look after. I recommend, I recommend them to anyone who wants a larger variety of house plant. So before I go, guys, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Don't forget, Bing that notification bell so you guys know when I upload a new video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.